particular, this, this cosmic event that we're here to experience together has, I might say, almost all but been forgotten. There are very uh, few people that understand what this event is about, and certainly the doctrine of, of the shadow, to the best of my knowledge, it doesn't exist outside of the research center. In other words, the problem as I see it is that religion has taken over as a doctrine rather than the doctrine being something outside of religion, but rather for the benefit and to assist the physical as well as the mental well-being of the individual. So tonight, as with every experiential, we're going to make an attempt to make cosmic connections for the benefit and welfare of our own well-being. Tonight is Hoshana Rabbah, translated literally means the greater assistance. Now that certainly doesn't say anything. Of course, Hoshana means help, assistance, but why would it be called the greater assistance? to indicate from a Kabbalistic point of view that there is something peculiar and particular about this seventh day of Sukkot, the seventh day of Sukkot, that does not exist in any of the previous six days of the holiday of Sukkot. Something very special is going on. And before we begin to comprehend the significance of this great event that takes place this evening to ensure an elevated level of consciousness to access, I would say, to a greater awareness of that which will be uh, taught this evening by Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Isaac Luria. The reading of the Zohar by and within itself will permit everyone here present to understand the teachings on another level. And that essentially is what the purpose of reading Zohar or the writings of the Ari is all about. In other words, if you don't understand the word, but the fact that your eyes connect and scan the words of the Zohar or Rabbi Isaac Luria, we have what medicine and maybe psychiatrists are, are making an attempt to assist us with uh, a greater understanding. Yet I don't know that they have achieved that objective in any way. But in any event, the mere fact of scanning is probably the best pill we can take for... Uh, relaxation, removal of stress, etc. I know of no other, there might be, but I know of no other that can so dramatically and almost instantly uh, perform this kind of feat. So we are going to begin with the reading of the Zohar, which deals with this event. And I quote from Pashat Emor, page 103. Vayivra lekim et Adam b'salmo. In Genesis 1, Genesis 1, for those of you not familiar with the idea that there, are, there were two Genesis, Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. Genesis 2 deals with the physical reality. Genesis 1 deals with what scientists de uh, comprehend in ways of billions of years, trillions of years. You can choose any number because nobody really can argue with you. 
And uh, we're dealing with Genesis 1, which is above time, space, and motion. And there it says that God created man in Bitsalmo, in his form, or you might say in his image, because the mut, again, we're not sure that there's two words mentioned there, Bitsalmo, Bikidmuto, but in any event, in his form. And the Zohar continues, B'sefer Shel Shlomo HaMelech Masate. I found in the book of King Solomon, this is Rabbi Shimon, Bar Yochai speaking, when there is an act of intercourse taking place below, before a person is actually born, at the time of conception between male and female, the actual image, the actual image, the actual form of the individual appears at that moment. Rashum Chakuk Betzelem. He is impressed and etched out in the form of, let's say, a shadow. We shall learn shortly there are different aspects of a shadow. Vahu Nimsa Al Ziva Gahu. And this form, a very vivid form, the form that if this conception that this conception will ultimately produce a physical human being the way that a human being will appear at a later date appears in its full form at the time of conception and if permission was given to the eye to see this he would see if he could achieve that kind of elevated consciousness, that kind of awareness, the individual would actually see the head of this form, Rashum Kipatsuf Adam, Selmahu Nivra Adam. And with this form, this form is what is involved in the creation of the individual. You may have heard Scientists speak of transpermia, that the form comes from some other, some other place. Some even say maybe from some other planet. But Rabbi Shimon says, no, that form, the form that an individual ultimately shapes up into a, this physical expression, is and is an evolvement, is an evolvement from this cell. And until such time that this form does not appear at, at the place or at the top or at the head of these two individuals, meaning the male and female involved in conception, in other words, not every intercourse results in conception and the birth of a child. And if you want to know when that conception is going to produce a child or not, in other words, waiting for the doctor to tell you sometime later on, if we were, if we achieve that kind of level of consciousness, we would immediately be able to ascertain at that moment the birth of, of an individual. Because there is a tselem, there is a form, an absolute form, and this is what it meant when it said, Vayivra Alekim et Adam Salmo, when God created man in his image. Now we know that in Genesis 2, there is a discussion of Adam being created, not in Genesis 1. And yet Genesis 1 seems to indicate also a birth of, of Adam. And the answer is, in Genesis 1, we are not discussing physical, corporeal realities, but rather the idea of tselem, rather these potential metaphysical forms that ultimately bring about the result of the physical corporeal reality. Tselem ahu nizdamen lo achi leolam. And this tselem, this shadow, this form, is constantly present until the physical corporeal reality comes into this world. 
when the individual, the physical corporeal reality of the of the birth of a child comes into this world, he does not move without this selim. Now, whether some might refer to this selim as aura, that is not what we're talking about. We are discussing a selim. We are discussing a form that you will see tonight when we do our experiential in in the form in the, in the physical form to against the moon in other words the individual has motion the individual has life but primarily based on this phys, this fact that there is an a tselem that surrounds us a form that directs our every and each movement. The Tselem Hazehu Milamala, and this Tselem appears above, and that directs us. That is the discussion from the Zohar concerning this aspect called Tselem. And now we go to the Zohar, and we go to the Ari, and he get, goes into more greater detail on that which has already been discussed here in the Zohar. And the subject of Leil Hoshana Rabbah, the, the evening of Hoshana Rabbah, the greater assistance, the greater Hoshana. This night is called the night of sealing. Chotem, which means a signet, as you know, a king would have a ring and by which he he would uh, put his uh, seal, corporation in the United States or I guess many other places in the world by, uh, by uh, affixing a seal to a document. It's not that it means the document is authentic only, but it also means that whatever is contained in that document, that's where that document extends until. In other words, things that might have been meant, things that should have been included, are not included because this chotem, this seal, actually cuts off. It ends. It ends the, the extent of what this document is about. The Night of Hashan Rabbah does the same thing. It is kind of a sealing. Sealing, you know, also means closing off. It is not by chance that both words mean the same thing. S-E-A-L means a seal on a, on a corporate paper, and yet seal means to close. But they both mean the same idea from a Kabbalistic point of view, as I've just expressed. What happened in the Yom Kippur, says the, uh, says the Ari? Because in Nila, the last prayer on Yom Kippur, there was also a kind of seal that took place. So he calls that the first seal. The first seal, which means the seal of, of the energy that an individual will receive. To what extent that energy that an individual will have for the coming year. As you know, we've said on other occasions, contrary to popular belief, that while the DNA contains everything that this individual will ultimately shape up to be, height, color, eye, color of eyes, color of hand, etc., and many other things, insofar as life is concerned, insofar as life is concerned, life ceases each and every single year. And we receive a new injection of life each and every Rosh Hashanah. In other words, when we say we are judged, it is not merely whether we are judged for life or death, but it also means that life has come to an end each and every single year, has come to an end. And it's this new year that hopefully we are making an attempt to draw down another surge of energy to provide us with, with a force that can keep us going for one more year. So on Yom Kippur, there was the first seal 
That was lechen az nidon haolam kulo v'nechtam or lechaim or lamavet. In other words, the seal closed this individual, closed him to whatever extent. If there was enough energy, then with that energy, that selim, this form, now has enough energy to continue. If that form was closed without any energy, then the result will be death for the, during the coming year. That is what Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is all about. Now, in this night of Hashanah Rabba, a second Chotem, a second seal takes place. What does it mean, a second seal? It's already been established. So he says that, and he calls it a second seal, because that which has been uh, judged or that which has been sentenced or the individual or that energy packet which has been sealed with either energy or the lack of energy, which means death, then this decree, this judgment, is then passed on to what the Ari would call an executioner. In other words, the one who executes, not executioner meaning in terms of death, but rather the one, like a, an executive officer, he is the one that is in charge. He is the one that is empowered to execute, to carry forth that decree. That happens tonight. In other words, if it is a, uh, a decree of life, then obviously for those of us who have this kind of decree sealed upon us, we have life. What about for those whose decree spells death? Death doesn't mean tonight, chas v'shalom. It doesn't mean tomorrow. It means during the course of this year. Now, death also means many things. Death can also mean the loss of a hand, the loss of a leg, the loss of sight, the loss of many other things. That is also called death because from the point of view of the Ari, we are not discussing life and death of the physical body. We are discussing life meaning a full packet of energy that permits the body to function as a normal individual or mavit, which means death, which means that the individual will be performing his usual functions in a very limited way, whether it means the loss of a hand or whether it means the loss of an eye or whatever. The execution takes place tonight. If chas v'shalom, and who is sure that their year is destined with the complete packet of energy, in other words, once there is a complete packet of energy, there is no there is no lack. When there is no lack, there cannot be a loss of a hand. There can never be a loss of an eye if the full impact of energy is there. What we assume seems to be, uh, by chance, a person losing an arm or, or a leg in an accident, that would never have occurred had this packet of energy been complete because then this Selim, and that's why the Zohar we read before says, this Selim hovers around, this is his security shield. Depending on the extent of the security shield, depending to what extent the security shield <coughs> is filled with total abundance, with total light, or to the extent that there is a limited amount of light, the security shield, this Selim that hovers around this individual performs and acts directly in relationship to the extent of the amount of energy that exists in this cell. So on this evening, in this evening, the execution is going to take place. And as the Adi, as he as is the Kabbalistic doctrine, that we do not live in a world of fate and the absence of free will. There is a power within us to be able to set aside, to set aside this decree 
that is going to be executed this evening. How? How? And he goes through several, several ideas which will be important for us this evening. Bear in mind again that we were discussing the second seal. In Hebrew, it is called Mishneh, second, like Mishneh Lamelech, second to the king. Mishneh Torah, there are five books of Moses, but essentially there are only four. The fifth book, Deuteronomy, is called Mishneh Torah, because it is uh, essentially a repetition of all that was declared in the, the first four books. The word Mishneh. Second. The book of Devarim, the entire book, is called Mishneh Torah. The Ari says this Mishneh Torah deals with Malchut, with the physical corporeal level that we find ourselves. Malchut means the world of action, the world where we currently find ourselves. Energy that comes to us, energy that comes to us, comes from an outside source. Like we said, the selim. We are like the moon, which is the description of the yari. The leslami garmaklum. We like the moon have no light of our own. Just like you know, the, the moon would be dark, would be a dark face if it did not receive this illumination from the sun. In other words, she, by within herself, has no light, has no energy, nothing, except that which it receives from the, moon, from the sun. The same it is with everything in a physical corporeal level, meaning including man, we have no energy, energy of ourselves, only that which we receive from what we call a higher outer space connection level, which is known as the Iram Pin in Kabbalistic terminology. The Iram Pin, which means the outer space connection, which means the level, a level of consciousness which is above the physical, corporeal, illusionary reality. The reason that we have a Torah to begin with, the four books of Moses, why do we have the Torah? Why do we need it in the scroll? Why couldn't the Creator just, uh, uh, just enumerate the, the precepts, if that's what it's all about? And that's what we are to study. No, but there seems to be an importance here of a scroll. And the Ari says the scroll, that parchment, and its structure and everything else that is connected with the Torah is called Ze'ir Ampin. That by and within itself is the instrument by which energy is passed on like this from the sun to the moon. This Torah, these four books of Moses, through that instrument, energy is passed to those who listen to the reading of the Torah to those who read the Torah, the physical Torah. That's why that is called, the first four books is called Ze'ir Ampin. However, the Mishneh Torah, why is it called Mishneh Torah? Because it is the fifth book, and for those of you who know the five basic spherot, Keta, Chach, Mabina, Ze'ir Ampin, and Malchut, Malchut is this physical corporeal level. The Mishneh Torah was written by Moses for the express purpose of creating for us a vessel by which the four books, which act as the channel for the Iram Pin, for this outer space connection, this area from where this energy to us comes from, that we can establish a vessel known as Mishneh Torah. And that's why it's called second to Torah. It is an addition. It is not the Torah itself. It is a vessel, just like the moon, is second to the sun. It is second to the sun for the simple reason 
that by and within itself, it has no energy. It is a vessel that is capable of handling energy, but does not origi originate, does not create energy by and within itself. Because the first four books of Moses are referred to as the Torah itself, meaning that is the instrument by which the Iran pin, by which that out of space connection where the energy for an individual is to be found. And that's why the reading of the Torah, I say, must be so powerful that in this age of Aquarius, even those Jews, the few Jews who still go to a synagogue on the Shabbat to listen to the Torah, most people find it very dull and will walk out. To me, that's an indication there must be something very important. No less than tonight. Tonight has been all but forgotten. Maybe we're the only ones sitting here outside, maybe in the uh, yeshivot. There they, they stay up all night, not knowing really why they're staying up all night, just that that is customary. However, we, we're going to know why we're going to be up and wait until and do what we're going to do tonight. Mishneh Torah hu sefer el ha'advarim. Therefore, it is called second to the Torah. The reading, the reading of the uh, Torah, and that is what we're going to be doing this evening. We're going to be reading Ela Hadvarim. Why will we be reading Ela Hadvarim? So he continues to tell us why. Because in other words, the decrees, the sentences that have been, uh, that were handed down on Yom Kippur are given over this evening, as we said before. And he says, by reading in the first part of this, of the night, the first part of the night, and he created a Mishneh Torah. He created something, a vessel, a, a document that, in the words of the Yari, could become the, the Lord of this Mishneh seal, of the second seal. Mishneh, Mishneh. In other words, the... the uh, the hishtavut, this this uh, reconciliation between these two aspects, the uh, Mishneh Torah, the uh, Deuteronomy, and the second seal have much in common. What do they have in common? For the express purpose that on this evening, by reading and listening and establishing this vessel of Mishneh Torah, we then can, in effect, change, still change, the execution of that seal. Verayel is there, and he even brings proof. Masha Kastu Besefer Harakanati. There was a famous Kabbalist called Rakanati. Ki naseh hadavar hazeh ba'adam echad. That this is what happened. She nistakel ba'or alavana. He went out at one o'clock to look at the, at the moon. And he observed that there was no shadow of his head. No shadow of his head. And he went back, meaning he went back, and he began to pray, and he began to weep, and he returned back to the future. You know what chuva means? It doesn't say, I'm sorry. But, since he was a uh, since this individual must have been involved in, in 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 Kabbalah, he knew the system by which he could return to the future, which he could you know as I said I think some of you or most of you or all of you have listened to the tape that chuva does not mean repentance. In other words, you say I'm sorry, but that doesn't remove the pain that was inflicted just because I say I'm sorry. No, the the, the you must return to. That state, just prior to where the sin that, that you may have uh, transgressed or some uh, hurt that you may have uh, 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 
endured upon another individual, whatever it was, you have to return to that point in time and you have to efface and you can't efface it if you turn back in that time and feel the pain of the other individual at that time and several other things together with Rosh Hashanah and he did this he went out again and when he went back and stood in the play in, in, against the uh, light of the moon he saw the return of the shadow on his head therefore tonight from what seems to emerge from the Ari is that by reading and listening to the Mishneh Torah within that Mishneh Torah because it has an affinity with Mishneh Chotam with the second seal it is to permit us and also provide us with another opportunity that whatever was decreed in this packet of energy and that also includes we're going down a highway to be ensured that you are not one of those statistics in other words things that occur to us that you might say outside outside our uh, our our physical actions those things we really you might say had nothing to do with or acts of god so to speak this energy packet called chaim life the security shield is that which we seek during these three weeks from rosh hashanah until tonight it is not something that we merely celebrate as as holidays of 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 holy days and high holidays whatever other corrupt names are given to these name to these how to these particular days we are talking about cosmic events we are talking about cosmic opportunities we are talking about a night of Ashona Rabbah that while at the same time the execution of of judgment on on all peoples of the world takes place nevertheless at the same time we were given the opportunity to be able to change to be able to change anything that might be detrimental to ourselves this night will actually permit us as the Ari says that tonight we want to remove we want to remove this this aspect called chitzonim, which are going to prevent this energy packet from becoming fulfilled because of what has been decreed. And he even goes so far as to say, as I just said, that this selim that we discussed, that we are born with from the time of birth, disappears on the night of Hoshana Rabbah. And he says, If you want to know whether a person is going to live for the next 30 days or not, the person who is destined to die in a particular month, says the Yari, and he draws this from the Zohar, that 30 days before the death of an individual, this shadow, this selim, that we will observe tonight disappears from the individual. In other words, I mentioned this uh, on many other occasions, that if, and today that's, it's vital, for someone who is uh, living on, on, on machines, in other words, uh, a, robo a robotic consciousness, where he is totally in uh, a comatose, he has no, for all intents and purposes, he's a, he's a pure vegetable, and then the discussion arises, what would happen if you remove all of these, uh, the instruments, the support systems that provide life for the individual, then he'll die. And then you get into the whole hassles of courts and so on, and who's going to remove the, the systems or not. But actually, there is a far simpler method, says the Ari, 
anyone who will not survive in 30 days from any date, this Selim will not be present. Because 30 days before an individual dies, just like tonight, until, one of, until 12 o'clock, this Selim that we discussed from the very beginning that comes into existence at the time of conception, this Selim disappears 30 days before the death of the individual. Now, what is the purpose of removing this Selim? Because this Selim is a packet of energy, as we said before. This is what is known in Kabbalistic terminology as the metaphysical DNA. It's a thing that creates the original physical DNA, but more so. It creates the total environment of this individual. It, cre it creates an environment that when he's heading down a highway or when he's traveling in an airplane or wherever he might be, this Selim accompanies. And to the extent that this Selim is fully packed with energy, to that extent, the individual has security. Why is this energy packet, this Selim, removed tonight? Because if that individual is destined not to live through the next year, then he, when we say he's given, he's, this individual is given over to the executioner, it is given over to these forces that are the instruments of death. And as long as that selim, as long as that shadow is present, death cannot prevail, death cannot enter. And when that selim disappears, and then the individual is given over beyond his beyond his his free will. He no longer has free will. The, the only time he does have this free will is when that selim is present. But once that has disappeared, he is then given over to these other agents of death. And then there is nothing, there is nothing that could be done. However, this night, this night, but as soon as that Selim disappears, immediately that Selim comes back. But there is a point there, a point, an infinite second, where a person has as going to go through that period. We may not physically feel it, but that doesn't mean anything because we're only aware of 5% that goes on around us at all times anyway. But this point, by losing total consciousness and regaining full consciousness, takes place tonight. And he says, why must that sell him return? As long as we're going to live for 10 minutes after 12 or another year after 12, because without that selim, one cannot exist. Once that selim disappears, then, as he said before, there is a gradual deterioration, and at the end of 30 days, exactly 30 days, that individual will die. In other words, 30 days before, that selim disappeared, and it takes 30 days until, until death actually, uh, uh, physically, takes place. In other words, he comes back, but it's like he said, he says, uh, a candle. You ever notice a candle just before it's going out? It's like sometimes you can observe, it no longer flickers, no light. All of a sudden, there is light. Have you noticed a candle? That's what happens to an individual during these 30-day periods of when the individual is going to die. Because you need that selim to, to continue the life for 30 more days. However, it's like that, it's like that and in fact, uh, I, think, I think in medical circles they say, uh, many times just before death, an individual suddenly He's, he's rejuvenated, he's regenerated. It looks like he's getting well. And then all of a sudden, 
he has a relapse. Then all of a sudden, he's re rejuvenated again. That's right, like in the storm. That's right. But that's because he cannot continue, and yet it continues to decrease. The tzelem continues to decrease. And once it has it has disappeared, in other words, even at 12 o'clock, he's telling us, the reason we don't feel death at 12 o'clock when, when the tzelem has disappeared, because it disappeared, but it was immediately restored. And that's the way this continues in these 30 days. Now there is another part. If I could just, I don't want to go through with it, uh, but there are other aspects. Unfortunately, if the medical profession knew just what Rabbi Isaac Luria declares in page 317 of uh, the subject of Sukkot, where he discusses all of the aspects of the of the soul of the individual there are three aspects then we really could know almost anything there is to know about not only ourselves but about most people around us but what i would like to just mention uh, in stating here is that this is in the talmud as well <laughs> In other words, there are demons. Whether you believe in it or not is not really important because if anyone says, I don't see them, we know that doesn't say anything because all we can see is with our 5%. But people, people, meaning real people, because there are real people, and then there are those people who also have, there are two parts to this soul we're talking about. There are people who are around who do not have two components, male and female, of a soul. They are called demons. That means they have one aspect of a soul, therefore they have a physical corporeal body, but for all intents and purposes, they are not human beings. You may have seen some of these science fiction movies about how people were created in the form of demons. Yeah, these sometimes horror movies, I'm told, on television. Yeah, things of that nature. And so I just, I'm just mentioning this because if the Ari felt it was necessary to inform us that there are times... There are times that these different forces compel us to do certain things that for, at a later date we ask of ourselves, how come I did this or did that, when if I had a half a brain, I should have understood not to do it. Because there are forces around. These forces contain only a half, what is called a half a kind of a soul. It is only the aspect of pure energy but not, but not the energy of a human being. I'm just mentioning that so that we understand that this matter of tselem is not to be taken lightly because it involves almost every facet of our life. So therefore, we are going to proceed on with the reading of the uh, Mishneh Torah, which will be from the actual scroll itself. There's a lot of energy that emanates from this scroll, and hopefully with the reading and uh, with the looking at the moon at 1 o'clock, we shall all come out of this experience with a, a year of joy, a year of fulfillment, and a year in which we have a complete security shield system to prevent any misfortune from befalling us. Amen.